Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. We've dropped off the side of the Cotswold Hills down into the valley, which runs up to Stratford. It's the Vale of Evesham. And we were looking for the Quintons. They're two little villages, Lower and Upper Quinton, partly because we knew that above Lower Quinton was a, an amazing prehistoric fort. Now, it just so happens that on the day we're here, um, the road to Lower Quinton is closed, partly with a lot of roadworks going on. So that made it quite difficult to get into the village. There's a sense that the place is in a state of disruption. And I must admit, Ross and I were on the verge of turning around and going back into the hills where we have a more familiar life um, and giving up on little Quinton villages. Fortunately, we persevered because we came to the end of this village and found this remarkable church in the in a beautiful brown stone um, a church which I will tell you a little bit more about in a minute, with a magnificent spire which is visible from miles around. And we discovered that this village really was worth taking notice of. So here we are, we're going to show you around a little, a few think, wonderful things about it. And we're going to fly the drone over it to see exactly how the village is laid out. If we're making a point here at all, I suppose, is that don't give up. Very often in the centre of these places is a wonderful, rather ancient settlement uh, and all the signs of it are around, right, all around us now. But also perhaps the message is we do need to be careful how we extend these villages, how the architects behave, how the planners behave. I think, I am afraid to say that my view is that in the case of the Quinton villages, the planners have rather let them down. Come with me. The church of St. Swithin's was first built in about the 12th century and added to, like so many of the churches in this region, over the 13th, 14th and 15th centuries. It's built of what they call sandstone rubble with ashlar or trimmed stone details. It was repaired extensively in Victorian times and it contains some interesting features. There's a plain chest tomb with the effigy of a knight in plate armour, believed to be in memory of Sir William Clopton, who died early in the 15th century, and another chest tomb in the south aisle with panelled sides and a marble top with a brass inset, depicting Joan Clopton, who died in 1430. There's some medieval glass in the windows and some interesting old pews. It is, as we've already discovered, in need of some TLC, and I'm sure the vicar will be successful in her fundraising efforts. So why am I feeling so uneasy? Of course, my unease about these lovely villages of Upper and Lower Quinton could stem from something quite separate from the church. The first thing you notice in the centre of Lower Quinton is that the architecture has changed. Here we see wood-framed buildings in black and white, and used as we are to the sandstone buildings of the Cotswolds, it's clear we've taken a big stride towards Stratford-on-Avon, famously the source of the greatest tales of conspiracy and intrigue in the English language. The Quintons are as enveloped in myths and legends as any village we've visited so far. The hill, on the lower slopes of which Upper Quinton is to be found, is called Meon Hill. Evans tells us how sad he is that the villages lie just outside his remit and describes the wonderful western slopes of Meon, whose praises I am never tired of singing. Legend has it, however, that Meon was created by the devil himself. It is said that he was watching from Ilmington Hill 
as Evesham Abbey was being constructed. And he was so cross, he kicked a huge divot of earth in order to bury it. Bishop Equine, who saw it coming, and using the power of prayer, brought it prematurely to the ground, forming Meon Hill. As before mentioned, there is a prehistoric encampment in the summit, and a footpath that leads you round the waist of the hill, from which wonderful views of the vale are to be seen. Perhaps the most gruesome of all the stories associated with Meon Hill concerns the murder of an agricultural labourer, one Charles Walton, who was found on Valentine's Day 1945 with his throat slashed by his own billhook with which he'd been trimming the hedgerows and pinned to the ground by the neck with his pitchfork. So violent was the attack that in no time rumours of witchcraft and ritual started to spread. Scotland Yard was called in and the most celebrated detective of his time, Fabian of the Yard, took over the case. Despite the distinguished detective's involvement, however, the case was never solved. He had his suspicions, but could prove nothing. We may revisit this story another time, because Ross has a penchant for sinister tales, and here we have only scratched the surface of the checkered history of Meon Hill. We'd be following in distinguished media footsteps, as the BBC Nationwide programme came here in the 1970s to investigate. But I hear tell that when they went to the local pub in Lower Quinton to interview the locals, the place suddenly, and for no apparent reason, emptied of customers, and no one would speak to them. So we've been around the Quintons. They are interesting villages, great, obviously thriving communities. The sheep are buying in the fields and there's, uh, everything's immaculately kept. The grass is carefully cut and the sun shines and it's all very lovely. There's something a little concerning to me. The church tower behind me is surrounded by barricades, warning of falling masonry. It may be very temporary and, and I hope it is and I hope they're having successful efforts in raising the money to put it right. I just wonder whether it's going to be that easy for them to do so. However, it'll be made a lot easier if you come, you drink in the local pub, visit the vid with this delightful church, and if you're feeling energetic, walk up the hill just near the village and visit the prehistoric fort. It's got to be worth doing just for the view. It's incredible up there. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You'll find us on Facebook and Twitter and all the other platforms. And if you want to find out anything about the Cotswold Explorer, visit our website, thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk, and we'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.